In this tutorial, I'll explain how to create two-dimensional explosions in our Unity game. I'll start by creating an image in Photoshop, importing that image into Unity, creating a material from that image, and using the material to set up a series of particle effects that gives us a cartoon-styled explosion. Our explosion will have three particle effects, the cloud, the fire, and the sparks, each effect using the same material. To start, open Photoshop. Create a new file. The width and the height I have set to 1000 pixels, and the resolution set to 100 pixels per inch. Since we'll be using the same material for a variety of effects, it's a good idea to have a high resolution image, which is why Photoshop is a great tool for simple sprite creation, but other tools could be used instead. Name this file Octagon Image. Disable the default background layer and create a new empty layer. Next, draw an octagon using the lasso tool, which can be selected pressing L on the keyboard. Color the inside of the octagon white using the brush tool, which can be selected by pressing B on the keyboard. That's all we have to do in Photoshop, so let's save the file to our Unity project file and switch over to Unity. If the image you imported is not from Photoshop, and thus is not a Photoshop file, you need to convert the image into a sprite in the Unity editor before converting the image into a material. Simply select the image in the inspector panel and select the convert to sprite option. This however is already a sprite because I saved the file as a PSD which Unity automatically converts into a usable sprite. To create the material, right click in the project panel, navigate to create and select material. With the material selected, navigate to the inspector panel, and in the shaders dropdown, select legacy shaders, particles, and select additive soft. Drag and drop the sprite into the texture selection box, then change the soft particles factor to 2. Next, to stay organized, I'll create an empty game object to store our particle effects in, but I suppose it's not completely necessary. Right click in the hierarchy and select create empty. Name this game object explosion. Next, let's add our first particle effect by right clicking in the hierarchy and selecting particle system, renaming it to cloud. The first thing I'll do is apply the material to the renderer. Scroll down to the renderer option and expand it. Drag in the material option from the project panel into the material option. Then change the sort mode from none to by distance and disable the apply active color space setting. As you can see, the particle for our particle effect is now the material that we created in Photoshop. Next, I'll navigate to the particle system's main setting. Change the duration from 5 seconds to 1 second. Then change the start lifetime to between two constants, setting each constant to 0.25 and 3, respectfully. Change the start speed to between two constants, setting each constant to 0 and 5, respectfully. Then change the start size to between two constants, setting each constant to 0.5 and 3. Lastly, change the start rotation to between two constants, setting each constant to 0 and 360. By setting these variables up to be randomized between two constants, each explosion should appear unique from one another. Next, let's change the gravity modifier to negative 0.2 and set the calling mode to always simulate. By setting our gravity modifier to a negative number, the clouds will rise instead of fall towards the bottom of our screen. Next, in the emissions tab, I'll set the rate over time to zero and add a burst to the burst list, keeping all of the default values. This way, our particle effect will burst and then disappear rather than continuously play. Now, in the shape tab, I'll change the shape variable from cone to sphere and decrease the radius thickness from 1 to 0. Let's enable the limit velocity over lifetime tab and change the speed to random between two curves. 
we can leave those curves as their default and simply change the dampening to 0.1. This will force each of our particles to slowly decrease their speed throughout the plane of the effect. Enable the Color Over Lifetime tab. In the Gradient Editor, I'll add a marker at the top near 60%, setting the alpha to 200. Then with the top ending marker selected, I'll set the alpha to 0. Finally, I'll change the ending color at the bottom of the gradient editor to the darkest black possible. Now the clouds look like they're burning out as they normally would in an explosion. Next, I'll enable the size over lifetime tab and change the size to random between two constants. Setting each constant to 1 and 0.5 respectfully. Enable the Rotation Over Lifetime tab and change the angular velocity to random between two constants, setting each constant to negative 100 and positive 100, respectfully. Lastly, let's disable the looping option in the main settings. This gives us a really good base animation for our explosion, but let's continue on and create the fire particle effect. Right click in the hierarchy panel, navigate to effect, and select particle system. Begin by applying our material to the renderer. Then change the sort mode from none to by distance. Disable the apply active color space and enable the custom vertex stream. In the particles main settings, change the duration from 5 seconds to 1 second. Then change the start lifetime to between two constants, setting each constant to 0.5 and 1 respectfully. Change the start speed to 0.75 and change the start size to random between two constants, setting each constant to 3 and 6 respectfully. Change the start rotation to random between two constants, setting each constant to 0 and 360 respectfully. Next, change the gravity modifier to negative 0.1 and change the culling mode to always simulate. As you might have noticed, this effect is very different from our cloud effect because our fire effect has to happen first and then our clouds happen as a result of the fire in the explosion. In the emissions tab, change the rate over time to zero and add a burst to the burst list, changing the count to random between two constants, setting each constant to eight and 10 respectfully. In the shape tab, change the shape from cone to sphere, set the radius to 0 0.01 and change the radius thickness to zero. Enable the color over lifetime tab and set the color to random between two gradients. In the first color, let's add a marker to the top of the gradient at 80%, setting the alpha to 200. Then for our last marker on the top side of the gradient, let's set the alpha to zero so that the effect will slowly fade away. On the bottom of the gradient editor, Let's add a marker at 60% and at 80%. Set the color for the marker at 80% to black. And set the color for the marker at 60% to orange. Lastly, let's make sure that the color for the ending marker on the bottom of the gradient editor is set to black. Next, for the second color, Let's add a marker to the top of the gradient at 70% and set the alpha to 150. For the last marker on the top of the gradient, let's set the alpha to zero. On the bottom of the gradient, add a marker at 10%, a marker at 60%, and a marker at 75%. For the marker at 10%, Set the color to light orange.
set the color for the marker at 60% to a solid orange, and set the color for the marker at 75% to light red. Then make sure that the ending color is black, and let's close the gradient editor. Next, enable the Size Over Lifetime tab and set the size to Curve, selecting the graph that looks closest to an inverse square root function. Lastly, let's enable the Rotation Over Lifetime tab and set the angular velocity to random between two constants, setting the constant to negative 100 and 100 respectfully. I'll disable the looping for the fire and now you can see the cloud and the fire match up very well. Let's move on to the final spark particle effect for this tutorial. Add a new particle effect by right clicking in the hierarchy, navigating to effect, and selecting particle effect. I'll name this effect sparks. First let's apply the material to the renderer component. Then change the renderer mode from billboard to stretched billboard. Change the speed scale to 0.1, the length scale to 10, and the normal direction to 0. Disable the Apply Active Color Space option and enable Custom Vertex Streams. Next, in the main settings of the particle, change the duration from 5 seconds to 1 second. Change the start lifetime to random between two constants, setting each constant to 1 and 2 respectfully. Change the start speed to random between two constants, setting each constant to 1 and 25 respectfully. Change the start size to random between two constants, setting each constant to 0 0.01 and 0 0.025 respectfully. Lastly, change the gravity modifier to 0.5 and the calling mode to always simulate. In the emissions tab, set the rate over time to zero and add a burst to the burst list, changing its count to random between two constants, setting each constant to 20 and 30 respectfully. In the shape tab, change the shape from cone to sphere and set the radius thickness to zero. Enable the color over lifetime tab and open the gradient editor by clicking on the color. Let's move the first marker on the top to 50% and set the alpha for the last marker on the top to zero. Then set the color for the first marker on the bottom to light yellow, and set the color for the last marker on the bottom to orange. Enable the Size Over Lifetime tab and change the size graph to the graph that decreases linearly. Enable the Rotation Over Lifetime tab and set the angular velocity to random between two constants, setting each constant to negative 100 and 100 respectfully. Now let's disable the looping option for the sparks and drag the spark effect into the cloud effect so that they all play together. I hope this tutorial was helpful for learning how to create 2D particle effects in Unity. Let me know if there are any other effects you'd like to see built in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to the channel.